Have you ever wondered why some relationships seem to thrive in their depth and degree of closeness, while others seem to fall apart or just never really gain momentum? So in this video, we're gonna start by talking about the five levels of closeness in relationships, what they mean, so you have a really clear roadmap for how to navigate this. And then we're gonna talk about how this specifically applies to a relationship with an avoidant attachment style, because there's gonna be some really crucial insights in here that you need to know. And then we'll talk in more detail about how to recognize if somebody's capable of moving up the ladder towards higher and deeper levels of closeness and what really key ingredient at the very end of this video you need to be paying attention to to understand if this relationship either as the avoidant attachment style or as the loved one of an avoidant attachment style is something that you want to invest in to keep that needle moving forward So if you've never heard of this idea before of the five levels of closeness, this is something wildly impactful to relationships. In fact, not knowing this is one of the biggest reasons that individuals will feel like they're struggling in relationships to build momentum and often spend way too much time trying to invest in a relationship that may actually not be a good fit for them. So first and foremost, what are these levels of closeness? Well, there are five levels of closeness in relationships, and if you think of a level five, this is the most closeness, the highest degree of closeness. And in level five closeness relationships, you'll see things like somebody being your deepest confidant, somebody that you can really trust and invest in, somebody who shows up really consistently and who you feel like accepts you for your sense of self. Somebody you have a very strong depth of connection with. You feel comfortable sharing things with them. You probably speak quite frequently. These are like your best friends, your partner in a really healthy relationship, or perhaps one of your closest family members to you. And these are the sacred trusted relationships that we're looking to get to. But something that you want to understand about this concept before we even unpack the other four levels is that sometimes one of the biggest pain points in relationships is that we're trying to push a relationship that is not capable of a level five towards it. And if we have somebody in our lives who's only capable of meeting us at a level three, it's going to be really painful. So our level four relationships are the ones, for example, where you feel deeply connected to somebody, but maybe you don't see them quite as regularly, or maybe you don't share quite as much with them. These would be like your good friends, your family members that you really get along with or click with easily, or perhaps a partnership or relationship where it may not feel like it's exactly where you want it to be, but you're on a really good track or things overall are quite solid. Some of the drawbacks to a level four relationship are that you may feel like you can't really take the mask off at all times and share somebody, share with somebody your deep inner world. And that could be perhaps because you're afraid to be vulnerable, but it could also perhaps be because you're not sure if you're quite there yet in the relationship. Or perhaps you really get along with somebody, but you just don't see them or have quite enough time in your life as you'd like to, to spend a lot of time with that person. Our level three relationships are generally the ones where we don't have as much closeness or connection. Maybe we don't really have that deeper bond. And perhaps it's because one or both people in the relationship are not capable of getting there together. This could be for a multitude of reasons. And this is really where you're really going to start seeing avoidant attachment come into play. This could be, for example, that there's just simple incompatibilities, but it could also be for reasons like you can't seem to break through core problems in your relationship. So you end up kind of taking distance from somebody. Perhaps you feel like you have really different interests and you can't seem to find that middle ground to bridge that gap towards really connecting or really getting along. In fact, sometimes we have friendships that have been on the rocks, for example, that were at a level five, that we actually have to pull back to a level three after maybe a small betrayal or something really going wrong in terms of how somebody showed up. Now, level two relationships, and you're going to see all of this in a moment, how this all ties together into the avoidant attachment style. Level two relationships are very high levels of contact. Maybe your acquaintance, maybe a family member you say happy birthday to once or twice a year. Somebody who's not necessarily a big part of your daily life and definitely not a big part of your inner world. 
And level one relationships are where we tend to go no contact or almost no contact. Generally, our level one relationships are because we have a painful history with somebody and we actually need to stay no contact as a means of self-protection. So Why does this matter? And how does this have anything to do with avoidant attachment style? Well, a big part of developing those level four, level five relationships is also that there's a reciprocity and vulnerability. It's actually really difficult to get to a deep degree of closeness with somebody if they're not able to let their guard down. Because at best, you can let your guard down, but you're not getting that reciprocal investment of connection that you would necessarily hope to see with somebody to bring it all the way to a level five. So generally what we'll see is that dismissive avoidant attachment styles are more capable of sitting at a level four relationship at best, because until they start doing that work to become more secure, which really is a necessity to evoke that vulnerability, without vulnerability, we don't have a level five. In fact, that's one of the secret ingredients to getting to a level five. And sometimes when we're in a rocky relationship, because we're not getting the vulnerability from one or perhaps even both partners in the relationship, what we'll see is that that relationship can start at a level four or at least get to a level four in the honeymoon stage and actually regress back to a level three. Now, generally our twos or our ones are like, you know, when we have perhaps a really unhealthy family member, maybe somebody struggling with drug abuse or, you know, some sort of alcohol issue or somebody who really doesn't have a lot of empathy or isn't showing up so well. And we actually can keep people at a level two or one as a means of trying to maintain some degree of contact or kindness but also having that kindness and compassion from a very big distance because maybe we've realized, hey, we've tried a lot of ways to try to build a connection more deeply and it doesn't really get progress and there's nothing healthy about it to keep moving it towards a three. So one of the biggest reasons people will suffer is because in order for a relationship to lead to a level five, both people need to be available for it. And oftentimes I've seen people who, for example, I'll I'll tell a story of somebody who will call Jane. And she had a a family member who unfortunately was struggling deeply with alcoholism, um, one of her parents. And she kept trying to invest in that relationship. And, you know, because at one point it was a level five and there was a lot of closeness between her and this parent. And she kept trying to invest and invest and get it back there. But because that person had their own inner demons, her parent was not available for that. And so she actually realized through this discussion that, you know what, This belongs at a level three right now because I have to have healthy boundaries. I have to actually have a little bit of distance from this because the more I'm in proximity to this person, when I've tried so many things to support them and get them to do the work and they're not willing or able, the more I feel depleted, burnt out, frustrated, sad, hurt. I take it personally at times. And so by her actually changing the level she was attempting to operate at in the relationship, it gave her great relief. And in fact, when we get to the level that somebody is only compatible uh, or capable of. You know, in that case, she had a, an unavailable, her, it was her mother. And in that case, that mo- her mother was not going to be available to get to a level five until she sobered up. And what we'll find is when we regress it back to that original level, it actually improves the quality of the relationship overall. Less drama, less fighting, less expectations, less pressure. And sometimes it actually helps there be a little bit more harmony and a little bit more simplicity and ease. But when it comes to the dismissive avoidant attachment style, what you'll see is that a dismissive avoidant often until they start doing the vulnerability work, practicing, opening up, communicating more, co-regulating, doing things to become securely attached that we know are crucial ingredients, what we'll generally see is that a dismissive avoidance sits at a four or a three. And so until that vulnerability is a part of things, it can cause an individual in a relationship with a DA to be like pushing and pushing for something that it's like squeezing water from a stone. They may not be available for that at that time. And so you have to decide if you're in that relationship with a DA, am I okay with sitting at a four forever? And for some people, that's still a great thing. But for some people, if it's regressing to a three and sitting at a three, For some people, they want more from their intimate relationships. And that really brings in the question, like, is this person willing to do the work? I've seen a tremendous amount of avoidance in our programs when I ran my private practice. 
that thrive when they show up to do the work that, that are very consistent and that become secure and make great partners. This is my husband was a dismissive avoidant and, you know, is a fantastic secure partner now, but that's the key factor is, is this person willing to do the work? Are they willing to show up? Are they going to make that effort? Because if the needle moves, you can get to an amazing level five relationship. But if they're, if the needle's not moving because somebody is not willing to let down that protective guard, that's where things can be really tough. So my hope for you is that this sheds some light on this topic and also helps just clarify some different dynamics for you in regards to depth and closeness and consistency. And if you have more questions about this, please let me know in the comments down below. And um, if you haven't already, this is one of the last days to join the 90-day boot camp, um, to join and jump into PDS. It's a 90-day boot camp. Um, it's a challenge for 90 days towards secure attachment. And uh, there's a lot of really cool features in there. You get a, a course framework that's all outlined for your attachment style. And you can look at the other attachment styles too, if you're curious about a loved one in your life. And then we have literally daily optional um, support groups and webinars. And I'm in there three days a week. You can jump in with me, ask me questions one-to-one -one in the chat or on camera on video. Um, and there's tr a tremendous amount of support. So if you want to check that out um, just for a limited time, I will put that link down below. And that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe so you don't miss any of these videos. And I can't wait to see you in the next one.